All right, thanks, Matt. Uh, so, as Matt suggested, I'm going to talk about uh, using Confluence for a knowledge base. First, a uh, little introduction. I like to refer to myself as the Atlassian self-help guru. So for those of you who don't know, that's Dr. Phil. He'll help you help yourself. And, uh, and that's, that's what we've tried to do with Confluence. So um, why do I call myself the self-help guru? Well, as Matt suggested, um, I've done a lot of work in support. I've been working uh, at Atlassian in, in the support team for four years. The first two or three years, I did Confluence, and I also did Jira support. During that time, I realized that there's a lot of automation possibilities in, in support. Uh, built Hercules. So Hercules is the automatic, uh, is the automatic uh, Atlassian support bot who he uh, scans your logs, gives you suggestions, knowledge-based articles, and bug reports that match your conditions. And uh, he's running on uh, support.atlassian.com. As a compliment, or as the engine that fuels Hercules, uh, I uh, help really author a significant amount of the knowledge base articles that Hercules refers to. So this is part of realizing that there's patterns in support. And I went and wrote a lot of troubleshooting knowledge base articles. One of the reasons I'm going to one of the things I'm going to talk about. Uh, I also help uh, write the content survey and reporting plugin, which is also something I'll talk about today. Which is basically a plugin that uh, lives on our Confluence uh, knowledge base instance and um, helps you review your content, make sure that it's, uh, you're, you're writing good content, you're getting good feedback on it. And then lastly, a presentation I'm doing in, uh, just after this is my most recent project is answers.atlassian.com, which is another self-help resource. So I'll be talking about that later in a different uh, lightning talk. So a, uh, an initial question. Do you ever prefer self-service than as opposed to talking to someone? Yeah, OK, yeah, great. Um, I, I, uh, have you ever been in a line and wondered, why am I in this line? It's sort of a silly line. I don't need to be in it. I was just at uh, the De Young Museum with a friend. And we're standing there in line and kind of look at each other and thought, you know, I bet there's an automatic ticket machine up at the front of this line. These people are just all standing in this line, not even thinking about it. Sure enough, I walk up to the front of the line. There's a kiosk there. With, you put your credit card in, you get your tickets, and you go in. So I walk back. I say, let's go. We're done. We skipped the line. And you're seeing this all over, right? Here's one at uh, you know, an airport. So a lot, a lot of airports are moving away from this, and people are actually looking for it. right? I don't want to go wait in line. I'm just going to go straight up to the front and use the automatic machine. Uh, this is Wawa. For some of you who don't know, it's the East Coast chain. You get your cheese steaks. And you can go get your cheesesteak right from the machine, right? You don't have to talk to anybody. Of course, at movie theaters, you're seeing this. Uh, even uh, Hello Kitty ATMs for kids, right? So it's everywhere. You're, you're seeing automation. And now sometimes people want to talk to a human being, but a lot of times the people are actually preferring to have automation. Certainly with uh, software prog product or any really any, any online uh, service, people are looking for self-help resources. And people are really expecting to be able to go Google something and get a solution, right? So the really good news about this is that I, I'm not sure what evolved first, the, the desire to scale your support operations or the customer service phenomenon that people are looking for. But at some, at some point, the culture changed, and people are actually looking for this, right? People want automation. So you get two in one. You, you, you scale your support operations, and you also give customers something that they're looking for, which is self-service. So that brings me to uh, where Confluence fits in. Confluence is a great knowledge base. And I'm going to talk about uh, five, five components to why it's a great knowledge base. So first of all is templates. Templates will give you consistent, good-looking, easy access article creation. You can organize your content in different ways. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about subscription and engaging your audience. So there's different ways. You really want to be able to sometimes push information to your audience. Sometimes you want your audience to opt in and subscribe to information. Uh, but uh, being able to cure all the content that's there and be able to highlight specific things and push that out to users is a core feature of knowledge base. I'll talk about that. And then building a community, which is something Confluence is great for. So 
uh, that's engaging your audience. And then also uh, the last piece I'll talk about is managing, really managing your content, making sure that your content's up to date and that it's high quality. All right, so first, if you think about, uh, if you're not using uh, space templates, you should start. Uh, a lot of times people, in the early phases of, con of Confluence usage, you'll just see people kind of dumping information in there. But templates can really make a really high quality, consistent look and feel. Uh, the look and feel of your page, especially for a public knowledge base, counts, right? If you think about, like, would you believe in money if it didn't all look the same? You know, there's something about consistency that really matters in a user experience. If they come to a page and they see, okay, this is, you know, there's hundreds of these pages, they all look the same, there's something professional about this experience, right? And what's easy about this is that anyone, you know, you, you, you make a template and then you can have hundreds of people creating content and it'll all look the same. So this is what it looks like. It's easy, uh, really easy to uh, create a uh, page using, um, uh, using a, a template. So here's what it looks like uh, for our knowledge base. Uh, there it is just to create a template. And we have four or five templates that we use. Uh, in this case, you know, you can have a Hercules-based article or you can have a technical alert or any number of different templates. So that way, uh, support engineers create our articles. Here it is um, being made and created. And then you've got uh, three sections, symptoms, causes, and resolutions. And that's true with every troubleshooting article that we have. So that way, people kind of know that they're in a knowledge-based article right then. And a support engineer doesn't have to think too hard when they make an article. So they come right in, make an article using a template, and, and they're off and running. Uh, the second point is organization, or lack thereof. Right? Things can quickly get uh, disorganized if you don't use good organization principles. If you think back to the uh, early days of, of Gmail, a lot of the, one of the adjustments was people had to start using labels and people missed their folders and hierarchy. Well, Confluence allows you to do both things. You can organize things into spaces first. So the way we've done it in our knowledge bases is that we have a product in each space. And then you can, within that, you can organize either hierarchically or by labeled content, right? So we really have the, you really have the choice. And we've, we've done that in our knowledge bases. We'll categorize things by topic, but then sometimes you have multiple categories, so we'll use labels for that, and we'll show related content based on, uh, based on labels using the uh, content by label macro. Uh, okay, and then the uh, next next subject is uh, subscriptions. So uh, being able to subscribe to content uh, in different ways is a key component to any knowledge base. So um, certainly you want to be able to watch uh, a space, and we have email integration. Confluence offers email integration for detailed uh, breakdowns of opt-in watching. It's also now got the mail page uh, uh, functionality, so you can send something to someone by sharing it with them. Uh, and that's kind of a push mechanism. So sometimes uh, one, of the, one key component to any good knowledge base uh, is are you allowing you know, proactive subscriptions, right? Are you proactively communicating your technical issues to your customers? And this is one way to do it, an announcement, right? So over on the right-hand side, actually, we have technical announcements. We're not pushing these to our customers, but we do offer opt-in RSS subscriptions to technical announcements. So if we have an alert, you can come and you can get an RSS feed for an alert. That's how we've decided to do it. We could be pushing it out to an entire group, but we don't want to do push, but there's, that's, a, that's a choice that you have. Uh, and then lastly, of course, there's RSS feeds. So we've got uh, an RSS feed for each version and for the technical announcements. So you can go subscribe to your version of JIRA and see what RSS feeds are, are, are there. Uh, engaging your audience. This is President Obama's better days. But when you, when you uh, have a great community, you really want to be able to leverage them. And Confluence is a tool that really allows that to happen. So. Uh, this is a really powerful component and a, really a modern thought is that you're not just providing content, you're also interacting with your users. So here's an example of this. I wanted to take a little, eat a little humble pie. This is a page that I wrote called Customizing the Dashboard. I wrote this back in 2009. This is about changing the, the macros that are on your dashboard. Uh, so I, I wrote this page. You go into the global template and you change around the uh, 
macros that are in there, and I wrote a page about this. And uh, a little bit later, a uh, user came along and uh, changed this page, or added to this page, added a comment. So here he is saying, uh, I actually didn't want to go in. My instruction said go into a template, go into a plugin, and change the plugin and redeploy. And he wrote, he wrote, you don't have to do that. You can just go change the code here, and you don't have to rewrite the plugin. Here's the comment, and here's the instructions on how to do it. Sure enough, a little bit later, uh, some other users came along and said, wow, that was, actually, that was absolutely fantastic. My friend, thank you very much. That's exactly what I needed. Now I don't need to go redeploy a plugin. Another user, Omer, almost a year later, and this is by far the single most useful comment I found, and hello, Richard Smith, I just wanted to say thank you very much. So there's, there it is, right? I tried my best, but the truth is, of course, I don't know everything, neither does our support team, and there's our community doing you know, one, one notch better than, than we could, and uh, by opening it up to comments, then all of a sudden you've opened yourself up to the entire uh, user base uh, adding content. And lastly, uh, I want to talk about the uh, content survey plugin. This is, uh, uh, we, uh, we toyed with calling it the was this helpful plugin because a lot of people can kind of identify with that. That's basically what this is. Uh, in order to have a really high quality knowledge base, you need to understand are your pages working. So this is a, uh, uh, this yellow box uh, is, appears on all, you can be, make it any color that you want. It's just a panel macro. And we're asking three questions. We're asking, is this article helpful? Is the content complete? And is it well written? It also could be, uh, is it still valid? You know, is it outdated? You can ask whatever questions you want. And we're using this data to understand where we're doing really well and where we're doing really poorly. There's actually some intelligence built into the search algorithm that comes with this plugin that highly ranked articles appear uh, towards the top and lower ranked articles drop down towards the bottom. So, uh, that's how we're doing, actually, just sort of expose our, uh, our quality. We've got 54% uh, of our articles are helpful. That's actually above industry standard, but we're trying to get to 70 or, or higher on was this article helpful. Uh, and then we're also kind of understanding is it, what, what's wrong with it. Is it not, is it not well written, hard to understand? I think we might add a, uh, uh, a, a question about complexity. Is it just too complex and you didn't even want to deal with it? Uh, and then there's a, that's a, a roll-up report to see how your, the health of your knowledge base is doing in general. And then below that is an uh, individual breakdown where you can see your best articles and your worst articles. So, in summary, uh, Confluence really does have what, you're, what a, a modern, high-quality, full-strength uh, knowledge base should have. It's got consistent templates for high-quality, consistent uh, look and feel. It's got different ways of organizing content. It's got different subscription mechanisms, so you can push, you can pull, you can opt in. Uh, you can subscribe by RSS feeds or by email. It's participatory as much as you want it to be. You can allow people to edit, you can allow people to comment, and that way you can really bring your community in. And there's survey capability. That doesn't come out of the box, but that's a free plugin, uh, so you can survey your, your users about whether the articles are working. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll take any questions.